I hear the secrets that you keep When you're talking in your sleep I hear the secrets that you keep All right, greetings, welcome Thank you for stopping by Here on YouTube at The Real Bloom From Within Love I go by Bloomy Welcome Welcome, welcome, welcome I send you guys love and light to all of my returning subscribers and viewers of High Vibe Energy, I appreciate you. May you be well. To the newbies, YouTube is growing constantly. Welcome. I hope you find goodies here on YouTube with Bloom From Within Love. Now, today is a discussion about me, Bloomy, Bloomy's life, the day in the life of Bloomy, aspects of my growing up aspects of my ascension the discovery of my karmic family things of that nature and so this is another segment okay now you guys are hearing that song i just like the song right <laughs> but it's with the theme of secrets secrets things that folks wouldn't know about one's family because to the public there's an appearance and that's kind of the story of my life and I will be revealing segments of it as I go on okay for this segment we're going to talk about the parentals okay and um, that root of thievery fraud stealing lying okay how they were the template they did it themselves they did it to us okay and so i'm going to be giving um true to life stories of things that i went through okay and then i'm going to share an aspect of my younger brother's experience um and then i'm going to bring it full circle back to mine up to the present moment okay um, I'm also going to share a bit about what took place when I was a teenager. And so just to bring it all about in terms of it's time for us to wake up. Okay. Nobody wants to believe that they have a karmic family. Nobody wants to believe that, you know, individuals probably don't want to believe. Okay. Because especially if these people are covert narcissists. If they have, um, if they've been, um, you know, really good at covering up and keeping up an image and a facade to the public, you know, kind of like that mommy dearest energy to the public, you appear to be this wonderful, caring, giving, you know, uh, contributing member of society who donates to charity, who takes whittles and orphans in and, you know, this appearance of that, but behind the scene to certain individuals, nothing but brutality, fuck shit, abuse. Okay. And that is my story. Okay. And we're going to get into that. Now you guys may say why a part of Bloom Within Love it's not just about you guys coming here for tarot readings or a Reiki session or light language or any of the other goodies uh, that I do have here. It's about the conscious ascension process. It is about the holistic approach to it. It is about awakening. And a part of that includes if you are someone that feels like you carnated on a divine path and you have surrendered into your path. In other words, becoming unplugged and awakening. Chances are you were born into karmic situations to remedy. So you were probably born into karmic families and karmic dynamics and karmic environments. And the way that this goes is those that are karmics and, you know, they want to stay in that illusion and that darkness. They are programmed to sabotage you. They're programmed to try to hurt you. This is why you probably always had this feeling that something wasn't right with your own family. And they could have projected it onto you. They projected their mental illness. They projected their dysfunctionality. All of that onto you as a scapegoat, especially if you're an eccentric, 
especially if you're one that beats to a different drum, if you're not afraid, you know what I'm saying, to break the mold, you know, things of that nature. So it's easy, especially if you come from a traditional, traditionalist type of a family that as toxic as they may be, as devilish as they may actually be, may be posing as sheep and angels of light. So they carry Bibles, they carry crosses, they carry rosaries. They, you know, if they're not into it in that way, then they have, you know, they go to, you know, Reiki centers or whole sage bundles and, you know, act like tree huggers or, you know, whatever forms of traditions that they have, it's just, it's on the surface. There is no real awakening. They're disconnected. It's more of an opportunist energy. It's about appearance. It's about clout. It's about recognition. It's about money. But when it comes to the heart and soul, it's empty. They do heinous things behind the scene to their very own. Um, and, you know, all of that slick and sly shit, why they quote Bible and say prayers and cry and, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> Why they try to talk like, you know, Southern drawl and, you know what I'm saying? All sweet and oh, honey pie, sugar pie. And oh, I'm going to make some net bones and greens and cornbread. And oh, I'm fin you know, they those are the images and the costumes and the personas. But they're hell inside. OK, and they do unmentionable things to their very own blood. OK. Now, as you can see, <laughs> as the table shook there, that's a representation of these individuals. They're heartless. They're careless. They're careless with people's hearts because they themselves are heartless. Okay? Now, Here's my story. Like I said, I'm focusing on the parentals for the most part. So we're going to focus in on my mother. I'm going to go back and give some examples of her. When I was a little girl, I watched some things. When my older sister was, I want to say... She could have been maybe a freshman or a sophomore in high school. There was this girl. I don't really know why this happened, this situation. And I'm not going to say this girl's name, you know what I'm saying? But she, she lived down the street from us. She also went to my sister's school. I don't know if there was an issue between the two of them or I don't know. So I think there was a fight or some kind of an altercation. But my mother, my grown up adult mother, went down the street where this situation was going on. And instead of being like, a high vibrational sound and balanced, mature, responsible adult, you know, setting a good example. She jumps on this girl, this teenage girl and beat her bloody. Think about that. The adult thing would have been to the parents come down there if there was an issue you would get the kids apart, you know, you would, you know what I'm saying? All these things, if it was some danger, but you're certainly not going to just get in and start beating somebody bloody. You're going to pull people apart. That's going to be your initial try. Have somebody call the cops, you know, you'll do what you have to, but you're not certainly going in there to um, jump on a minor. So there is the element of the abusive nature here. Okay. Now, the, the, the twisted part about this, you guys, is years later, and I mean many, many years later, once we all became adults, and I'm talking years later, so a good six years ago, 
okay, five, six years ago. My mother was visiting in Nevada and at my sister's house, I was there at the time and they were discussing old times. I was disgusted by this. I was actually turned off. I was disgusted because the conversation was being had like it was something funny. Like it was something that was cute. My mom, even in the old age, still conducting like that. So, you know, they were saying something about remember this and that and, you know, home chicken, whatever. And my mom's comment was, you know, yeah, I, you know, I beat that. I, I beat her ass. I, you know, something, you know, bullshit. Too old to be talking like that, first and foremost. But what kind of example is that? Even later, it would have been different if the conversation was something like, wow, you know, I really wish I hadn't done that. Or, you know, wow, was I, you know, something was wrong with me back then. Or, you know, it wasn't a remorseful conversation. It wasn't in all oh, disgust or, you know, looking at how far I've grown. It was almost a celebratory kind of laughter at being abusive toxic to this teenage girl and the mother who should be an example and a representation of proper conduct is the ling the lead uh ring leader I'm saying all this for a reason, because this is what divine beings live through and watch unbeknownst to people on the outside looking in, unbeknownst to extended family that think they know everything and know nothing about the real that has gone on up close and personal. Divines have seen this kind of stuff play out. I saw this stuff play out. As I listened to that, I just kind of shook my head and I walked away. I don't want to hear that. All they do was like to trauma bond and talk about toxic shit. So I was like, nah, I didn't even say nothing. I didn't even want to be there. And um, as it was disgusting to me, <clears throat> I was like, this is disgusting. What kind of fucking example are you? And you want somebody to respect you? On top of that, they're cowards. My mother is a coward. So is my father. I'll get to him next next video we'll deal with the father principle but i say this because what they do with the, within their own children within their their own offspring is they triangulate and they lie and they play their their offspring against one another okay and when they're narcissistic, they have their golden child narc that they're afraid of. And that they, um, they're they afraid of, and if they benefit in some way from whatever that golden child um, narc is operating in. So they go about trying to get everyone to basically comply with the toxicity of the narc offspring. And this is what my mother did. She did that to her grandchildren. Her grandchildren would call her complaining 
and trying to share things about their mom, which is my older sister. And it was always the same thing. Then she did that with me. When there was toxic things going on with me and my older sister and my nieces, she did the same thing. And then she would turn around and say different things to me and go back to them. This is atypical of narcs. This is why I don't deal with narcs once I identify them. Because they're not straight lace. Okay? Anything shy of everybody sitting in a room together at one time, chances are you're going to get some convoluted shit. So... They co-sign abuse. My mother did it. Make excuses. Triangulate. Right? Cowardly. I remember one of the last conversations, you know, which proves the point about how they're cowards. As a mom, I have a son, and if I were to have more than one, or, you know, I know my, my heart for him, but if he had a situation or, you know, something came up and he was trying to share his heart, and if there was some foul play, and I call myself being so godly, and I call myself being so discerning, and I call myself, you know what I'm saying, then, and then if I had myself experienced some pretty toxic things with maybe one of my other children, I'm going to stand up for that. I'm not going to kiss ass. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to do any of that. If there's foul play, I'm going to call my offspring off on that shit. I'm like, no, and I'm doing it for everybody. Like, no, wrong is wrong. Fuck that. Something wrong with you. You need to go get some help. No. We're not playing this game. I don't care what kind of money you got. I don't care what you, none of that. And in the last conversation, it was like exposed because she, she tried to say, she was like, you know, I was asking some questions about if she was aware of the things, my sisters, um, nieces and an ex, you know, what was going on. And, um, she was like, oh, you know, she tried to play fake the funk and all kind of shit, but at the same time still told on herself and everybody. So I'm like, she dumb. <laughs> but then she was like, oh, you know, she said, um, you know, I don't talk to her anymore. Talking about my sister because they had a fallout, right? You know, she had told me about this fallout or whatever. And she was like, you know, I'll talk to her. I was like, oh, you know, whatever. Didn't care. And but when she thought that I may call her my sister, which I never had planned to, I was just gathering information. But she was like, oh, don't tell her, you know, you talk to me though. See that cowardly energy? Don't tell her you talk to me. See that messy energy? This is the dysfunctionality that I'm talking about. That's messy. That's toxic. And some of us have grown up in families like that and thinking that that's normal. We watch TV shows and, and shit like that that advocates and supports and make it humorous. But that's actually a dysfunctional family that's toxic. It's unhealthy. It's only breeding more and more mess. So she's like, well, yo, don't tell her. And I, and I kind of, I squinched my eyes. I was like, uh-huh, let's see. Let's see what kind of lie she squeezed out her, her useless mouth. And she was like, well, you know, I said, well, why? I said, you know, out of sheer curiosity. Why? I mean, if you guys aren't talking, that's fine. But why would you care? Why would you care? 
for me to mention that I've spoken with you. And she was like, oh, you know, because, you know, if she's doing the black magic, if, you know, they're doing this, you know, this black magic, you know, I don't want her to do put a spell on me because I already feel like she put a spell on Tony. I already feel like she put a spell on, you know, I don't want her to do it to me, right? I laughed, actually. I remember. I laughed. I said, huh. I said, she's already got spells on y'all. <laughs> and, but the point was like, that's a coward. I wish some, man, man, I wish a motherfucker would. If my son came to me, I was like, that what? I'd be like, shit, I don't care. You could tell him you talk to me, whatever. I, shit, we could, you know, I wouldn't be backing down because why? I'm in integrity. That's number one. So I don't have to hide. Number two, I'm not a coward. I'm not a coward. But see, this is the kind of stuff that divines are born into very cowardly, passive aggressive, abusive, narcissistic dynamics. My mother tried to play this role like she was so, you know, um, when my grandmother passed away and that's a whole nother video. I'm going to talk about that from my grandmother's perspective when I deal with what she wants to say on another video. But she tried to act like, oh, poor, you know, poor Brandy, this and that. And we're just trying to, it, that was all bullshit. All of it, all of it, all of it. They projected all of their toxic bullshit. That's what narcissistic people do. They do all the abusing and all the crazy making and all the gaslighting, creating trauma and drama for a person and then trying to portray to the world like they're this hero savior trying to help this helpless weakling. The irony is if people start paying attention, it's like, why did they have such a problem with the separation then? See, if everybody is as strong and as independent and as okay and with, you know, as they proclaim themselves to be, then they wouldn't have never resorted to all of the toxic shit they did. Narcs don't like losing control they don't like rejection they don't like being told no they don't like you know they objectify people and if they can't dictate that then the next step is they're trying to destroy you and that's essentially what happened with me they hoped that i was going to come out to nevada get stuck get trapped it was a plan it was a strategy so that I would have to keep running back to them so they can falsely prove themselves so-called right. And so they can look like a hero and so that they can be around me and my son's energy because they're weak and they're toxic and they're karmic and they're empty. This is why they got pissed when there was a separation. That's why I chuckle and I laugh. If I was the one codependent, why was I always able to not have to fucking be bothered with them? If I was the one so codependent, why was it that I was the only one that was always able to be all right with not dealing with them? That's the irony. They try to paint a picture while they were purposefully causing havoc in me and my son's life. Purposefully. And I don't care how many people they get to group up and lie with them and for them. Narcs are notorious for that. 
They raise their children to become sociopaths. And that's exactly what happened. So, she was a coward. I was like, yeah, this is the kind of shit, this is why I want nothing to do with these people. All the while, talking about me behind my back, scheming. You guys know the story. And I'm going to keep reiterating that. And I'm going to keep sharing more pieces because Source is saying it's time. These folks had ample time to get their shit straight. They had ample time <clears throat> to stop the fuck shit, to stop the spell work, to stop the lies and the games. So the more they attempt to ruin me, the more I'm being released to expose them. So let's get to the theory. We already see the threat of violence, right? We see the lack of integrity, the poor exampleship, all of that. By the way, they claim to be so strong, but they haven't been without a penis for more than two weeks since 1975. This is my point. I find it fascinating how they tried to paint a picture about me being codependent. <laughs> Fascinating. And now one of them has been able to be without a lover for more than two weeks. Whether this was official whether this was a marriage, whether this was living or not, but somebody that they were dealing with, that they were benefiting from, yet they want to so-called try to tell somebody else how to get their life straight. They themselves plant and, and plot and scheme because they're codependent. <laughs> now, back when I was a teenager, my older sister had a limited edition Monopoly game delivered to my mom's. My mom lied, act like it never happened, hid it, kept it, stole it. And it's like, um, it's a joke. It's something we make light of. It's something, you know, that's like, ha ha, you know, later when it comes out and it's like, wow, so your mother stole from you something that you ordered and you paid for and that's apparently cute, I guess. And she denied it. Let's move fast forward. My little brother, I wanna say four or five years ago, came to me as he would every time there was some crazy issues with my mom. Once upon a time, it was about him and his wife, his first wife. Then another time about him and his second wife. And another time it was about something that my mother did. My mother stole from him in her old age. 
She used his information, his credit. She did something. And something showed up on his credit or he got a bill and him and his wife were, you know, trying to fight it because it wasn't something they did. My mom tried to put it off onto my brother's wife or my brother's um, wife's family. And to such an extent, my brother got so pissed and was incessant on looking into it and pushing it through. My mother eventually, because my brother said he was going to press charges, that he wasn't playing. And so after all of that, then my mom apparently admits to my brother and pays him off for what she had did. Pays off the debt, the bill. My mother. I'm saying all this to share with you guys the thread and the root of this dishonesty of this fraudulent, you know, lying, sneaky, conniving, backstabbing behavior in my blood, my bloodline, my own parents. In her old age, yet she's the same one that cries and walks all, you know, you know, plays on people's sympathy and, you know, you know, go to church, maybe. I don't know if she's doing that now, but prays and cries and talks about the Bible and Jesus and, you know, act like they're not into certain things and they are, so they're hypocrites and liars. Ding dong, confirmation. Yet she conducts like that. Disrespectful, no boundaries, right? Feeling like they have the right because of them being their children or whatever. Narcissists have very twisted, disillusioned minds. So you can see why my sister is that way. I already mentioned to you guys about how I later found out that my sister was giving my information to my nieces to use in order to get utilities on. Without my permission, I found out. And what I find ironic, my mother, when I talked to my mother about that, she, she herself said, oh, I remember that. I remember that. So that let me know that this is the kind of shit that they've been doing. And how disrespectful is that? Oh, I remember that. Didn't tell me, didn't stop it because that's her get down. That's her same energy. She do the same shit. Yet to the public, they appear. Oh, they're so wonderful. Oh, they're so helpful. Oh, they're so godly not. <laughs> they tried to scapegoat me when I got into this field, but now they're paying for it and they will continue to pay for it. There's nothing divine, godly or pure about them. This is the kind of shit they do. No respect, no boundaries. And if someone were to have done that to them, this is what I find it fascinating. 
If someone were to have done that to them, this would have been a big deal. How dare you use my information without my, uh, you know, approval and permission? How did, yeah, because they feel entitled. A false sense of supremacy and importance. They have a right to violate your boundaries, break the law, because that's essentially against the law, so they're criminals. Using your information or your children's information, creating credit lines or purchasing things or whatever. This collective is dysfunctional. It's toxic and it's actually abusive. It is abuse of your rights. It's an abuse of your personal space, your personal data. But they have people fooled. Because they go to church and they make cookies and they, you know, talk a certain way and people are just dumbfounded, gullible, falling for it. Hypocrites. Talking about Jesus in the daytime, doing a death ritual at night. Putting in hex and curses on people. That's who they are. And that's why I put the public notice and warning because anyone dealing with them is going to start to see some interesting things happening in their own lives. And for a ding dong, and for a long time, they scapegoat and tried to throw things onto me. And this is why they're under some heavyweight judgment. They tried, they lied on me to so many different people. They tried to betray me as somebody that was going around putting curses on people or spells because I'm a tarot reader. Their ignorance and the ignorance of those that they're talking to. They're all hypocrites. Some of these people are fucking murderers, thieves, criminals, and want to talk about God. Some of these people then hold around with everybody that's walking, still is. Sleeping with their own kinfolk. They tried to take one thing they found written of in scripture and ignore the other thousand things. <laughs> oh shit. The other thousand that they are in violation of. Laws for the lawless. And if you try to follow one bit of the law and you fell at the other, you have felt at it. See, they're hypocrites. You can't be a thief, a jealous whore, a murderer, and then want to talk about 
oh, you're not supposed to do tarot. Ho, you ain't supposed to be hoeing either. So let's let's not do that. <laughs> And then they're still hypocrites because they're into it. They hide it. They're into astrology and horoscopes and all that kind of shit. So they're bullshit. They're full of shit. Full of shit. Thieves, my karmic family, okay? This is the kind of tone that was set through the parentals. And they're still like that in a old age. They try to act like they changed. They not changed. She lying. She ain't changed. A part of the reason why my mother is in the condition that she's in is because of all the toxicity she's invested in. And this is what I was saying last night that a lot of people, a lot of the karmics aren't even understanding or aware. They just try to make themselves feel better by saying, oh, you know, it's just life or, oh, you know, God, let me survive. No, this is really not what you think it is. This is, yo, you, you fencing to live some shit out for a little bit. You wished death on your own child. So this is why you're decrepit. You wished ill. You participated in that. You knew about it. You co-signed it. You yourself was jealous. So this is why your life is fucked. That's what you don't know. God didn't spare you. This is your karma. Death will be too easy. You wanted your own child to suffer, so you will suffer. You wanted them alone, you're going to end up alone. You wanted them without love, you're going to end up without love. You wanted them sick and desolate and losing things, this is your lot. You wanted them shamed and exposed? Well, welcome to the Hall of Shame. This must happen collective because some of these people, as I've mentioned on other videos, Karmics like Sodom and Gomorrah will self-destruct. They're gone. And I know it's a challenge when you look at these people or you look at it, you know, it's your family and you look at them and it's like, wow. Well, the way I feel now, you guys, is it's deeper than blood. Blood can be some of the most toxic things in your life, whether you want to accept this or not. They could be the secret silent killer and the secret silent corporate behind the scene that has been strategizing the whole time or that has been secretly trying to compete with you like my sisters as well as my mother.
So give up the the delusional notion of any remnants of them being anything other than what they are. Now, yes, you know, it's it serves us, it serves you to work on forgiveness and clearing that out, but that's for you. Releasing people and all that good old stuff, that's for you. But don't get it twisted. It's a reason you're uncomfortable regarding your own family. It's a reason you don't trust them. It's a reason, it's a reason, it's a reason, it's a reason. You know what you've experienced. And that's the best way I can put it, beautiful souls here. Because you can go to this one and that one and try to talk to folks. And one thing I've learned that if individuals themselves haven't been born into something like that, then perhaps they can't fathom it. Perhaps it's not in their programming to be able to compute that one was born into a toxic, poisonous, dysfunctional, karmic family. So they can't compute it. It's like, well, how is that to be? What do you, well, I thought you said you read the Bible. You know, you so got the Bible on your table and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Like, come on, you know? So anyway, you know, I just wanted to share this. I know it's a bit long, but this is the day in the life and the story of Lumi and her toxic family, her karmic family. And in this segment, you know, really dealing with the karmic mother and the poor examples and the lies and the fraud and the fake shit and the illusions and the cowardliness and all of that, it's real. And I've already warned the public, anybody too close to them, you're going to start seeing a lot of destruction. And for a while, they've gotten away with trying to project it off onto people like me or, you know, who ain't doing now, none of that. We're not into that. But death and destruction and curses are surrounding them. And anybody that stays too closely connected to them, they're going to start to see what I'm saying. All right. Love and light, you guys. Namaste.